Were you guys as confused as I was that the Dolphins couldn't find a trade partner that wasn't the Patriots for Devontae Parker? Because I immediately assumed just because they did it with Wes Welker, where he had one touchdown catch here and then becomes a borderline Hall of Famer there. I assume that they're going to make Devontae Parker their best receiver, and Devontae Parker is going to look there like he never looked here, and he underachieved the entire time that he was here. If you're a top 10 receiver, you have to be someone who dominates if you're in the first round. And as soon as the Patriots traded for him, I'm like, why are you doing that? Better to just let him go anywhere else and get less for him than to send him there. Wow. I was at a kid's birthday party Saturday, and a guy next to me, Got the alert on his phone, and he hit me with just a, oh, no, the Dolphins. And I was like, oh, no, what happened? And they're like, they tr- he traded Devontae Parker to the Patriots. Why would they do that in the division? He had that same reaction that you did. And my first thought was, D- Parker's not good enough for us to be, like, I don't give a shit. I mean, if it was somebody, like, I don't know, Devontae Parker, I know he has the skill set. Neither like, was Wes Welker once upon a time. Yeah, but I mean, he's that's not Dan's Wes, point. But he was never Wells Welker. Trade him elsewhere, though. Well, outside I mean, of the division. I, I'm with you. I get that theory in general. I just don't know Devontae Parker reach, reaches it's fair. the level. What you're saying is fair. Why would anyone fear Devontae Parker going anywhere? But what I'm telling you, it's not just top 10 skill set. It's also that I didn't understand why Belichick gave up a second and a seventh for Welker back then. And I'm wondering now, what's he see? that was underutilized with the Dolphins, where he's like, I want to give up something that I value, a future third-round pick. And it's not much. It's not like they got that much. They traded a fifth this year and got a third for next year. So I'm like, you can't get better than that or even the same thing somewhere outside of the division or just not even outside of the division. Send him to the Jets. I don't care if he goes to the Jets. You can do it in the division if you want to send him to the Jets. (laughs) Just why are you sending him? He'll become worse with the Jets. You didn't have another trade partner? The biggest thing is, right, when they traded Welker for all those picks, it was Tom Brady was there. Mac Jones is not Tom Brady, obviously. And I think Mac Jones' deep numbers, throwing the ball deep, aren't great because they don't really have anybody outside that can command that kind of space for the X receiver, right? When when they drafted Devontae Parker, they thought they were getting A.J. Green. And then all of a sudden, he wasn't A.J. Green, right? <laughs> who are, who are uh, Belichick's <laughs> options? Dan, like, you saw me there. Who are the bad? Who are the bad? T- like first round guys that have kind of been flops? Because that's what he's oh, looking for. Belichick so is many terrible at drafting receivers. Right, but, but he's so but bad. He, oh, he can only take finished articles from other teams. But in the trade market, if he's looking for a Devontae Parker, he's probably looking at every team. Who's the first round guy that's got a good skill set that hasn't been used right? Parker fits that, but I just don't know if there's a lot of other options around the league, like guys like like a Mike Williams. Or something. And he's probably be better. He's better than Parker. Chris, but, but has he not been used right, or just has he been hurt and unachieved? Right. That's what I mean. That's why it doesn't. Because they use him right. right. He's just never. I, there. He, he has. He has one great season on his resume in six years with the Dolphins. It was the year that he was most with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ah, so I, I mean, you can say that the Dolphins did fail Devontae Parker over the over his time here. He was also incredibly injury prone during his time here. However, like when I got that, it was like fifth round pick. Eh, but when you get the third round pick next year and all of a sudden, you know, the Dolphins are loading up on draft picks again to maybe if they need to go up and trade for a quarterback, if they have to go get a quarterback next year, I think they're, they think they got a decent draft haul. And I'm not as big of a believer in the, you can't trade within the division. It's go get the best trade. Like I, 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 I don't think that like the notion of trading within the division is that big of a deal. When like just because you see him twice a year, you're gonna feel worse about it. If Devontae Parker went to Philly and crushed it with Jalen Hurts, I would still be annoyed at the Dolphins that they failed Devontae Parker. I think an interesting thing to think about too is Mike McDaniel. His offense doesn't really have that big body X receiver, right? Like who is their guy? George Kittle played that receiver role. Brandon Ayuk, who's six feet tall. Like they don't have a use for a guy who's six four who's gonna run a go route. They want all small guys that are gonna be fast. Chris Cody just got done saying that Mike Williams is better than Devontae Parker, and he's produced more, but I don't know if he's actually better. They he was not drafted the same way on a skill, on just measuring of skills. Devontae Parker's supposed to be a dominant receiver. His body has betrayed him in some ways, and I don't know. What it is Belichick is seeing beyond, he's better than anyone I have. He's better than any receiver on my team. He comes here and he's my immediate number one. 
Belichick, what he's seeing, Dan, is a couple of years ago, Devontae Parker had 11 catches, 140 yards against the Patriots, and he wants that guy. He says, I could, I can, that guy could do that every single week if I'm his head coach or something close to that. I have expected, I believe that Tony misspoke, but also spoke correctly when he said that Devontae Parker has unachieved. I believe that that's an accurate appraisal, even though the word is underachieved. Put it I, on the poll that <laughs> way, though. I mean, let's go. Did What do you want me to put on the poll? That Did Devontae Parker unachieve? Yes. <laughs> All right. Put that on he the did. poll. <laughs> he, he was here for seven years. That That's another one where it's like, wow, we've been asking ourselves, is Devontae Parker a number one for seven oh, years? Oh, he's the, he's the receiving equivalent of Ryan Tannehill. Yes. But overall, though, if I'm at a kid's party and I hear, like, because that's one of those famous things when you're yeah. out on a Saturday, some random person. That's where everything happens oh, at a kid's man. birthday party. And it's just Seriously. like some guy gets an alert on his phone and it's like, holy shit, some the guy. Dolphins made a move. You can only, you can understand my panic there. Yeah. Like, it could be, this could be anything. When I heard it was Devontae Parker to the Patriots, I'm like, okay. And it's, it's the rare time where you have, like, some security in what you have at that position. With the Dolphins. Normally, it's like they traded a receiver who's produced before. They've got nothing left, but you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. They'll survive. That trade has already been successful because we're on a graphic now that we've never been in my entire life. Top receiver. I've seen, like, throughout Twitter the last few weeks, top receiver duos in the NFL. We're just on the graphic. I don't yeah. know if we're number four. Congratulations. Or number it's yeah. just... It's a win. I don't it, need him to play a game ever. I'm, I've never been on that graphic before Tony, in my put, entire life. put it on the poll. It's at, Clayton and Duper. At Levitard Show. Marks Brothers. A kid's birthday party. Is that where everything happened? Uh, put that on the poll. <laughs> I do wonder if, given size and scheme, if the new philosophy is going to be, I don't need someone that size who runs down the field, but isn't really a deep threat because I like the idea of the three of those guys together, but I'm assuming that he either had no use for that skill set or he found it redundant in some ways that wasn't as good uh, as Tyreek Hill and Waddle. I, w I love the idea of Parker as a third option. I Not even a third. He would be like the fourth. Gusecki's probably the third. I love the idea of, of keeping my fifth-round pick not giving up a third-round pick, and keeping Devontae Parker. I wanted to see what that would look like. I actually thought, when I asked McDaniel, when I asked him, who does Dolphin fan base need to keep an eye on next year because they were underutilized, I thought his answer was going to be Devontae Parker. His answer was Waddle. But I... I have expected more from Devontae Parker every game he's ever played because I believe, look, just looking at him, yes. looking at the way that he moves, looking at his size, I believe that that should be a receiver that that dominates. I don't see a physical difference between him and C.D. Lamb. Do you? Uh, no, and what you wonder, and I understand it, but Brady's no longer there, and you have to factor that in, is what is Belichick, who is the best coach in the game, what does he see that McDaniels but, doesn't but, see? But what of him know? missing all the time on first-round picks and receiver? What of him, like he thought Chad Johnson was going to work. Like he's got a pretty long list. Yeah. All the guys that he's drafted there, even with Brady, haven't been any good. He never got Brady help until he got him Randy Moss. Uh, Aaron Hernandez and Randy Moss, but he was trying to build around Brady for a long time with the skill positions and the one that he got right is the one that gives me the PTSD because Wes Welker wasn't that here. No. Wes Welker had in, in his Dolphin career one touchdown but Belichick liked the route running. He he liked how hard it was to game plan against Wes Welker because you could game plan and if he runs the routes the way you're supposed to run the routes there's no there's nothing you can do about it. I just I, I just looked up the Patriots draft history of receivers. Yeah, they haven't Whoa. they haven't drafted a good early round receiver Terrible. since Dion Branch in two thousand and two. Was he good? I mean, I mean, you, you want a Super Bowl MVP, right? I know, but I, I mean, mean they, they they drafted oh, Edelman. Okay, put it on the good? poll. I put mean, it on seriously. the poll. Put it on the poll, Tony. Can you ask what <laughs> was he good of a guy who won a Super Bowl MVP? I don't know. Did Manningham uh, win the MVP or was that Eli uh, Eli Manning? 
Um, I can you? I think act- Eli won them both. The both times the Giants won, I think Eli won these. I don't feel like it's fair for someone to say to you, <laughs> he won a Super Bowl MVP. You to hop skip over that with I know, but also still stinks. Like your <laughs> your I know, but and your I understand are simply bridges to explaining that you're not listening at all. Oh, like, pretty much. You're well, not, or you're not uh, accepting the new you're, information. You're, you're not absorbing. Well, okay. someone tell me if Dion Branch was any good. Seriously. I know he won a Super Bowl MVP, but go ahead. Look at the stats and tell me if he was any good. Who, okay? is, who has uh, Bill Belichick drafted at receiver th- since 2002? Can you give me the list of people? Yeah, so, I mean, the, certainly the, the best one to his credit was a seventh-round pick on Julian Edelman. I'll give him that. Yeah. But if you look at the early picks, 2003, second round, Bethel Johnson. Ah! 2006, second round, Chad Jackson. Oh! Uh, 2009, third round, Brandon Tate. 2010, third round, Taylor Price. 2013, second round, Aaron Dobson. Wow. Uh, going <laughs> up here. Uh, in 2019, first round, Nikhil Harry. Wow. Like, he wasn't very good. Although he stopped he, for a while. You could tell he's just like, he just, I'm done with this I, shit. I can't do this. I can't do this. <laughs> well, in the middle there is me for going. Randy Moss. <laughs> right, exactly. <Yeah. laughs> he's just like, leave it. I can't do that. I'm no good at this. Nick Foles was a Super Bowl MVP. I was pointing it out. That's all. I mean, but he, any good? One he, of the greatest playoff he, runs of all time. He was, he was yeah. great during those playoffs. Big Dick Nick. <laughs> Speaking of big dicks, let's get that sound from ESPN of Diana Taurasi using a phrase that was wholly, wholly unnecessary and seems like it's just uh, the immaturity that you'd find around here. Dion Branch never had a season in which he had a thousand yards receiving Super Bowl MVP. (laughs) Dion Branch has never had a season in which he's had a thousand yards receiving. Please, All right, sir. so go before that then. Go before 2002. Uh, Stugatz, uh, Stugatz wins. Fine. Uh, Deion Branch wasn't that good, even though he was Super Bowl MVP. And Whittingham's point stands that you are allergic to new information. That your I understand and your I get that, but are just karate moves meant to keep people away from you so you could finish what you already thought. All right, so if we're not accepting Deion Branch, is an early round wide receiver that worked for the Patriots, then you have to go back to 1996 when they drafted oh Terry Glenn. Oh, Terry ah, Glenn. Terry, Terry Glenn. Glenn. He was no, good. I mean, that was Parcells. <laughs> yeah. That was not even, that wasn't Belichick. That was Parcells who drafted. Has Belichick never drafted a good wide receiver except for Edelman in the seventh round, which we can agree was just luck if you're doing that in the seventh round. Did anyone get fooled by Edelman saying he was going back to the Bucks on April Fool's Day? I, I bought the uh, LeBron is gonna wrap uh, wrap his season up. I, I I believe that one for ten minutes, and I was like, oh, what? wait a second. Why? Well, because it would make that sense. That was so obviously fake. It, it would make sense that the guy <laughs> I, who's, I the ele- who's, who's the who's who's the eleventh seed in the West is like, all right, I'm out. Mm. Are you not paying attention to how badly he wants to win that scoring title? And attention. Yeah. Well, the attention that comes with winning a scoring title, that's the only way to attention at this point with that team. Well, it's actually not the only way. That and losing. I meant more the attention he gets on April Fool's for making, oh, LeBron's not going to play anymore. Everybody, let's talk about LeBron today. Guy loves attention. Is Gronk just going to wait to see what's going to happen with Brady before he decides if he's playing again, by the way? <laughs> just making sure Brady's staying put? Yeah, that, like yeah. he doesn't want to go back to the Bucks and have Brady then show up on another team and then he gets stuck on the Bucks. If you're Gronk, if you're someone who's been uh, playing off of his endorsement money, wouldn't you just come back a week before the season? Just avoid all of training camp and all of that and just come back and try and get ready and get in shape the first month of the season. Yeah, you definitely would if if you're Gronkowski. I mean, he's put everything he needs to and the way that people talk about i think it was a chris sims stugatz on goblet's football who's talking about the telepathy that those two guys have where there is no relationship that is anything close yes. to what the two of them have that part of what makes them so good is that you couldn't even explain it like if you tried to explain how good gronkowski and brady are together you couldn't defenses couldn't they can't figure out what to do with the two of them so he doesn't need to be in training camp when the two of them are on the field they'll be fine you can make the argument as uh chris cody wants to get in the graphic that that is the best combination of players ever you can make it even with montana and rice 
uh, simply because uh, the revolutionizing of the position combined with there simply is no stopping Brady throwing to a spot where Gronk's hands have uh, happen to be. And he's, you know, he's a polar bear, uh, trained polar bear athletically, who uh, you simply can't get physically around his body to defend things where Brady is throwing them, even if you know where the ball's going. Belichick may be the greatest drafter of tight ends in the history of the NFL. Uh, think about Strengths it. and weaknesses. <laughs> Um, Aaron, God's good at that. Aaron man. Hernandez uh, and Rob That's still Gronkowski. Still a good draft. He couldn't have known. He couldn't have known. That's he still a win as far as he could have known. No, as stop. He, oh. he could have known that five years later he'd kill ten people. Like, it's not his fault. I, I don't there, know. There were some was things there. There were some things there. Wow, you are Monday ten. morning quarterbacking that. I don't think it's fair to assume. In your draft murder, research, murderers, no murderers. That someone's a murderer. There are more whispers around you being a murderer <laughs> than there were around Aaron Hernandez. Yeah, even people are going to say we should have known. There was plenty around. Yes, <laughs> we did. <laughs> That's right. Billy is going to Billy's going to be able to say, "Well, I didn't know. I was telling you." I've been on telling air. you guys for years. <laughs> Aaron Hernandez, there was all sorts of crud around him that was incriminating, that could have made you assume that he was a bad character person. I still think, though, that it's a great leap, a big, great big leap to I'm a bad character person to I'm willing to kill multiple people and give up all of my freedom and my life in exchange for the risk of doing that. I don't assume that of very many people, absent proof. I mean, a couple of fights with a couple of bouncers in Gainesville. It is a big leap. You're right, Dan. There's no way anyone could have known that was coming. You I know mean. what's funny about uh, what Billy just did there is he has been warning you all that Whittingham is a murder, and yet now I want you to get an alert at a kid's birthday party that uh, somebody looks up at Chris Cody and say, Whittingham arrested for murder. <laughs> It'll be like the first news story ever where they go to interview someone and they're like, I told you. I told you. Watch out for that guy, man. I've been warning you. It's because it's always like, oh, I'm such a great neighbor. I never would have seen this coming. It's like, I told you. I warned you guys. <laughs> Billy on Channel 7. <laughs> All this Dion Branch talk makes me want to play the game Athletes That Can Out Trees. Mm. Mm. Ryan, I feel like we Ryan Leaf. We've Have we played, played this? I feel Free like Rollins. That, I think this Robert is Woods. One, one of the originals, I think. Charles Oakley. I think oh. that I think one of the originals. It was a good idea by us. That was the tree. It was it was Len Barker. You were probably like 13 years old. The then first it's, you know time what? Let's redo it. This yeah. game. No, that's okay. <laughs> we had top five Bruce Willis lists last week after doing that a few months ago. Top we're in reruns. Uh, we oh, yeah. occasionally look when you're talking every day, you know what's funny about this medium? And I know the fans complaining about our show do not care to hear this. Branch Ricky. English cricketer Joe Root. But one of the situations that we end up in a long time is, uh, and this has gone back a ways. The Toronto Maple Leafs. We find ourselves in a position all the time where people expect us to never repeat ourselves. And yet when I was growing up in sports radio, the reset of the hour was just a host talking about the same thing because people in their cars are driving around. So a host only had to, had, had to come in with like three topics. Stump the Meech. You imagine driving around in your car, given what the expectation is of our audience now, when we repeat something from six years ago, or when your dad, because he can't remember anything, does a back in my day that he did two years ago, the buzzards swoop in and say, you guys already did that. Wake Forest, the Deeks. I mean, I, I don't I don't feel bad about doing this over again. If yeah. if we can't do things from 16 years ago, then I think we're out of material. Right. <laughs> like that that it's harsh. It's harsh to say. Well, we did we did that game once as the feud in 2006. Forrest Gregg. Can you guys look up for me whether Tree was actually the name of Tree Ball, Tree Rollins? Jerry Palm. The Panthers have clinched a playoff spot they are the first hockey oh. team to clinch a playoff spot and the miami heat have basically for all intents and purposes they've clinched the number one right that was that with no jimmy butler last night i mean i suppose they could cough it up in the last couple of games mathematically because they have not actually clinched it but they caught me off guard winning the way they have the last few nights i mean chicago winning and then going back to back to toronto toronto's been beating people up toronto's been 
been very good this year. And the Heat didn't have so many of their guys, including their coach. Winning that game uh, to to solidify their seeding at a time, Stugatz, I know you've been talking about the idea that everyone fears the Nets, but the Nets have got some difficulty here, not just because they're allowing 130 points a game, not just because Curry is injured uh, or just limping around, not just because Kyrie doesn't look quite the same when you don't give him weeks off at a time, Stugatz. Like right. he doesn't, he's not quite as efficient. I, I'm. This is something that's always interesting to me, how much dilution you get of the NBA product because guys aren't rested. People complain about load management, but Kyrie Irving looks so dominant when you give him a week off or let him play half the games, and then all of a sudden he's got to go through the grind of the machine, and he's out there, and Durant's scoring 55, a career high, in a game they need, and they lose anyway. I don't know that the Nets do got, uh, are they as feared to you because you you've been you still expect- I mean they're feared because of that guy and those two guys in particular. Yes, they're feared, I but, think. But what you're seeing, you have feared, you still fear that Anthony Davis and LeBron James are going to make a run in the playoffs because you just love names and love guys. But when I tell you this team when it's been together gives up 120 a game, doesn't play defense. Kyrie Irving has been they're bad defensively with Kyrie Irving, not mediocre, bad. And Atlanta's suddenly playing well, and you've seen Atlanta do it recently, Stugatz. You've seen Atlanta go deep into the playoffs. You don't feel Char- you don't fear Charlotte in any way. As a no, player. you I'm, don't feel Charlotte. I'm not sure at, at the Miami Heat should fear anybody, but it's the names of the Nets that bother you, even though they're not playing very well, and even though at this point I don't even know how much of a surprise it would be if they didn't even get in. Names and superstars bother you. They do in the playoffs because the bench gets shortened, the starters play more, so Trey Young would bother me, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, that would give me fear, that would give me reason for concern. So the names and the superstars are what bother you. I don't care about Charlotte. I really don't care about Cleveland. I care about those two teams in particular. It's the Nets and the Bucks. Even the Hawks don't really scare. I get you. Trey Young's really good. Trey Young, but oh, I, I. What are you doing? What there? happened That's there? A good one. I mean, what was just that? Trey, just- Tree Young. No. no. Hey, Zach, good job. Are you kidding? That's enough, Wait a minute. Why? I hit the wrong button. <laughs> I tried good. to hit the loser game show sound. It never works in here. I tried to beat you to it, and then you hit the Hakeem Nicks laugh. No, I, I made Which is offensive. It's, no, it's offensive. No, no, no. Let, me, let me correct the record. Oh, that's bad. But I think like, it's just name. Like, I'm with Stuga. I don't care about what the Nets look like defensively. That's what everyone wants to say. Oh, they couldn't stop it. They're the scariest team. I don't even more than the Bucks. I know the Bucks. I think the Bucks are probably the best team, but I would still rather play the Bucks than Durant and Kyrie. I don't want any of that. Really? I I just think that's not accepting any of the information that this season has brought. Like they they when they looked their dominant best in last year's playoffs, they had all three of Harden, Kyrie, and Durant going. And you're watching them thinking they're going to knock out Milwaukee. They're going to fly to the title. They need three dudes in order to make that thing work. And they don't. Like, Ben Simmons hasn't played yet. Doesn't seem like he's going to play. And there is just too much outside of Duran and Kyrie that's not enough to really think about them as a serious threat. Now, do you want to play Kevin Duran and Kyrie Irving no. in a best of seven? You don't. But I, I don't think that they're the threat that I would say three or four teams in the East are. Eli Apple. Charlotte is not interesting. They're they're a team. When you look at their, uh, I think they've won as much as they have lost, and their records the same at home and on the road. And I think their point differential is zero. That they've scored exactly as much as their opponents have scored. That would be an uninteresting first round matchup. You do not want no. that. Atlanta would be interesting because Atlanta's playing better, is healthier, and you saw what Atlanta did last year. Cleveland's not terribly interesting if they fall. Correct? If they fall, no. Out of the the seven seed. So, don't you want the Nets as a fan? I, we've talked at some around this before. I want stories. I want stars. I want fear. I don't want Charlotte. I want the I want the playoffs to start, and I want to be afraid that the Miami Heat might lose. I think you'll get plenty of fear. I want the easiest path. I want championships. I want to run to the title. That's what I want. So I want the easiest path in order to get to where it is but I want to get are, to. Are you not confident? You're you're the best team in the Eastern Conference all season by record. Warren Sapp. 
you don't have in the Eastern Conference, when you look at everyone's record, nobody's got a better record than you. And you could say the Celtics were the best team in the conference. If you want to look at point differential, they're the what they've done over the last two months, beating everybody by 20, has made it so they've got the second best point differential in the league. They've been, it's just, it's Phoenix and them. They're plus seven, yeah. And we've seen how playoff basketball changes and mutates team basketball that at the end of games what it is that you need is a star player who's going to score for you the portland timbers and the miami heat are four guys who we would all agree are between very good and all-star taco fall very good and all-star but all the other teams they're playing against how would a is it a tree falling? Tree that, fall. <laughs> yeah. it, it, Justin that's Timberlake. Great one. I mean, that's a great one. Big tree fall hard in the season. Yeah. yeah, that was never He's said. Also, six, like seven foot four. Sixteen years ago, that one was never said. <laughs> he was like three when that happened. Honey Badger. Nelson Figueroa. I don't know what you're doing a now. Fig tree. Now you're just but Honey Badger. Like what? What do you mean, Honey? I mean. But it's it's a, it's not anybody's name. It's just a it's a nickname. We played this before, so we got to expand it. We got to yeah. you know. Yeah. Good round. The Heat have four guys that you would say between very good and all star. That's one once in our lifetime it was the Pistons that beat Shaq and Kobe. No matter who you are headed into the playoffs, at the end of games, you better have somebody who cannot simply be stopped. But, Dan, you want to jump right into it with the Nets? Like, you want to get right to it, right? That doesn't scare you a games, little bit. I, I love that the last two games have mattered. I love that I'm watching Heat games and I care. The result is not something that's irrelevant. That I care whether they get the one seed. I want storylines. I want drama. I want this team that is very lovable to be tested. At the top of a conference that feels like football. It feels like the NFL. You're like, you're going to watch this. And I'm like, eh, how much better? Like, you're going to assume Milwaukee's better because you've already seen Milwaukee do it. But Milwaukee just put up a stinker that they kind of needed. Milwaukee Milwaukee was at home and they just lost to Dallas, a team that's now very trendy in the West. Dallas is flying. I The, the way that Dallas defended in that game was insane. I like I I, w I watched that game for like 15 minutes in the in the fourth quarter and the Bucks were stuck on 103 for a long time because of how well they defended and the way that Luca and I was stunned yesterday at how important Dwight Powell is to their offense but the way that he was setting screens and working off of Luca it's clear when they traded Porzingis it was just let's open up the floor for Luca and and allow you know Dwight Powell to play a reasonable facsimile of that role. It's also clear that Luca spent the first half of of the season just not caring at all. Out the buffet working off the beer weight no he it was the off season at the buffet and then he's just like i'll figure it out the first half of the season i'll get in shape during the season i'm a young man i can eat the way it, dk metcalf deleted the tweet but dk metcalf claims that he has one meal or is that a fake boat was that a bogus no no thing? it was real but i don't believe it for one second well, this, well, let I me mean, look at him let me get out there what it is first before you claim he's a liar reggie bush he claims he has one meal a day and coffee and three or four bags of candy. Oh, man. Give me a break. Come on. Come on. He's 6'4", 235 chiseled of marble, and you're going to tell me Skittles and coffee does that? Give me a break. <laughs> I don't blame you for... for Talk to somebody. Well, we have here somebody criticizing you, Tony. Uh, what else is new? Yeah. Damn, he writes, Tony, stick to playing ball and being the pretty boy. That Mike Greenberg impression was the worst I've ever seen. Not only the worst Mike Greenberg, the worst impression <laughs> ever. You don't get this show. Now, I've never talked to anybody about my grand, my grand, Mike Greenberg impression. <laughs> only a mean, because it's a... <laughs> You're so bad at it. Wow. It, you're, you're, it's the only throat. throat. It, but it's not throat. even an impression of green. No, Dan, it's it's an impression yes. of a means impression of exactly. green. It's bad yeah. Which is why it's bad. Yeah, Dan, mm -hmm. my throat's not what it used to be. Bad Bunny this weekend was just a oh. movie, Dan. I don't know if you can... <laughs> I don't even know if you can exp like put your mind to it. Was there an 18-wheeler on stage? There was an 18-wheeler. You can actually yeah. rent it on Airbnb. We should do a show from the 18-wheeler. Can we do that? 
Oh, no. did you're right on Bad, Bad Bunny? Bunny and not put out the entire concert on Instagram. <laughs> I did. I only put there out was two a things. lot of Bad Bunny on Instagram this weekend. weekend. I feel like I was there three days in a row. I I invited you. You told me no. Well, no, you didn't invite me. You're yes, gonna I charge did. me for the tickets, and I wasn't going to. Well, that pay isn't you like. Yeah, no. I mean, that's an that, that is an invitation. invitation. Nah, invitation is I got it. It's on me. Wow. Invitation is gratis. I don't. I don't. Well, I didn't want to go with you also. That's that's the real reason. Right? Put it on the poll, please, Guillermo, at Levitard Show. Is someone actually inviting you to something if they make you pay for your own ticket? <laughs> I mean, it's an expensive ticket. You're you're asking Tony to eat a lot of money there. Yeah, but it seems like someone bailed on Tony and Billy's bailing him out. Like, he doesn't exactly. really want Billy. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. The invitation yeah. didn't come when we were buying the tickets originally. It was Boom. last Wednesday ago. when the concert Bail was on out, Friday. Buddy. It's like two days from, hey, you want to do something in two days? Like, no. No, it buddy. sounds like Tony made a business decision yes, to, buy, I, to buy a bunch of them, and then he got up to the week of the, uh, yeah, of the I, concert I think, and was I think, like, I think, I think nobody bought an, these tickets. This is an NBA Top Shot situation yeah, yeah. where Tony- No, I actually was, make money this, on that, th this, was a, this was a business investment that Tony made in Bad Bunny tickets, thinking that the market was going to be saturated it's never Bad good. Bunny interest. It's never good when you have to make a Twitter post. Please, somebody, oh, I have yeah. four tickets available. DM me. Made Been there happen. before. Yeah, yeah, Instagram yeah, yeah. story. Made it happen. Yes. It is not a friendship when you have disguised a grift in an invitation. Like that's not that is that is not that is not a colleague uh, that can be trusted. If you're simply trying to to uh, Billy, look at Billy. Billy's over there saying this I is odd from a mile away. I'm like, I know this isn't real. <laughs> uh, it was real. Uh, it's real. I don't even know that the tickets are real. The tickets were real, and I they were think, spectacular. I don't think I don't think Tony is upselling you. I think he would make you pay face value. Mm, yes, I would. I would have told. I would have given but, you the receipt, Billy but you didn't want to go. The way the game usually works, you get an invitation, the person who gets the invitation offers to pay, and then the person's like, you know what, it's fine, I got yeah. it, I got it. The the fake offering to pay, that's just one I of love the, a fake offer to pay. No, that's one <laughs> of the parts of my parents. Parents. If I go to dinner with my parents, I'm always like, you know what, let me get this yeah, one. Let yeah. me, they're like, I got it. I'm like, all right, yeah. fine, mom. I, I fine. have you done- You put your hand in the pocket? <laughs> oh, for sure. I'll even pull out a card. Yeah, yeah. I'll be like, hey, mom, I get this. Right. Hey, excuse me, well, wait. And my mom's like, get right. that out of here. A, I'm right, like, fine, right, mom. right. <laughs> right. It will get declined, but it doesn't matter, right? Put it on the poll, please, Guillermo, at Lebitard Show. Have you ever fake offered <laughs> to pay for you a know, meal? No, I got this one. Oh. No, no, Chris, Chris, please. All right, fine. We'll split it. My brother is the king of like insisting. Like, he means, like, no, 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 no. Look me in my eyes. I'm paying. <laughs> you don't understand. Aggr aggressive. I'm paying. <laughs> Say thank you. No, I, I mean, I'd love to go just, to dinner with your like, brother. I don't the, the perfunctory like I got to do this dance. I've asked my dad so whenever we like whenever we split the check. I, I always go. All right, what should I put for the tip? He said I got the tip a hundred times, but I'm gonna ask a hundred and one because it would be rude if I didn't ask. But that's just the part of life that I don't get. Uh, is yeah. like what what is the song and dance that we have to do? Oh, I'll get the check. No, I'll get the tip. What are you putting for tip? Like why can't we just be uh, real? You gotta make sure your dad's tipping enough, and that's yeah. Right. If, if I'm no, putting no, he's, no, he's, he's, he's got it. He's 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 if I'm he's doing zero tip, I gotta make sure that you are no. doing that. No, he's, full he's generous. No. And if, well, then I'm the asshole. Because yeah. if your dad just goes a little less, then all of a sudden I'm the asshole when they're looking mm. at these cards. No. Your dad sounds like a cheapskate. No wow. offense. <laughs> what? I'll get the tip is like, what, 20% of what you paid? You paid 100%. He pays 20%. He's trying to be no. the generous guy. He pays we've, a fifth of what you did. We've split the checks. Mm. We've split the amount of money. And then. I don't like that. Yeah. What? If we're splitting the checks, we're not doing secret tips. You're telling me how much you're tipping so I tip the same amount tips? so then I don't get judged. I'll exactly. go a dollar more, though. I'm Billy, like, I got yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to yeah, show yeah, yeah. up a little bit. How about bit? you doing yeah. 20 bucks each? All right, 22. <laughs> I don't like the secret tips, no. Here's the thing about Billy. I text him, Billy, we're at the concert. We're having a great time. You should have come. And he said, no, I'm saving all of my energy for Daddy Yankee in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I did say that. I Kevin was lying U about that. Kevin Euclidus. Uke. That doesn't work. Eucalyptus. That doesn't work. Judges? Yes, it does. So, Judges? So yep, it works. Bad. It works. No. Uke. Not for me, Clive. <laughs> Listen, the nickname of the eucalyptus tree is Uke, and the nickname of Kevin Eucalyptus is Uke. I mean, right. how about that? Huh? I don't think the eucalyptus the Paul Millsap. tree. <laughs> you already used the sap. Oh, that's right. Has that category is closed. How about the Greek god of walks? It though? is true, though. When the sheets and giggles arrive at a house, everyone goes, you. <laughs> You see? That's not true, but it's brought to you <laughs> by Chris Cody, who is brought to you by Sheets and Giggles. Is that for the rest of your life? You
Duke. Duke. No, nope, just until the money stops. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I'm not kidding you. When I went to breakfast with Stugatz the other day and Stugatz paid for it, uh, I would have been less surprised if a horse with an alien on it had come by and uh severed his head with a machete and it's not because i don't expect stugatz to pay it's just because nobody ever pays with me like ever i've been stuck with bills for 20 years listen to me trust me you paid for that meal many times over <laughs> little expense <laughs> It's going to be more. He's going to submit it for more than it was. <laughs> In the back door. Perhaps yeah. they're playing around with the numbers a little bit. <laughs> eucalyptus. Kevin, Put a one in front of the fish. You, Kevin, eucalyptus. That, that's, that's what you petered out with. You had the whole segment. All you had to do to keep filing those <laughs> inflated yeah. expense accounts is, uh -huh. is just simply sit there and think of tree puns. And at the end, you come up with Kevin eucalyptus. <laughs> Daryl strawberry. <laughs> A strawberry tree. Derek Rose. I mean, now we're doing a garden. No, no, this is amazing. No, Eric Flowers. Are, you are, you're manicuring a garden now. <laughs> I'm Boston Garden. Yes, you got you to take the Reggie Bush out of your forest, Greg, and you got to put it in the Boston Garden. 